Boy, what a beautiful place to shoot a video. We've got a nice breeze, high 70s, early 80s temperature, and beautiful fresh air. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the fresh air inside your vehicle by replacing the cabin air filter. Okay, the first thing that you need to do when you're going to change out your cabin air filter is to remove the glove box. Once you open it up, gently push in on the sides and you're going to release these little pins that are on either side of the uh, glove box. Okay, once the glove box is removed, you need to get to the uh, location where the cabin air filter is located. And in this case, it's right behind this mesh screen door. Okay, to open that mesh door, you have little tabs. You pull up on the tab, and this is going to open up the screen door. There's one tab on each side of this. Okay, once you get these uh, mesh doors unhooked, like I said, they're hooked at the bottom, you're going to notice one of mine is missing. That's because it's broken off by the prior owner, and it just kind of sits in there, so I moved it out of the way. But you can see where the little tab was here that held it in place. Okay, now you have to get to the air filter, which is right behind this pleated door. Now, to open that little pleated door to get to the cabin air filter, you have to insert your key into the ignition, turn it forward, but do not start the Jeep. And what you're going to do is you're going to press the air circulation button right here. Okay, I'm going to insert and turn the key forward. Make sure that the fan for the air circulation button is at least turned into an on position. Press the button. You're going to see that it lights up. Okay, now when you turn the ignition forward and you press the air circulation button, this is what's going to happen. You can see the door open up and that's going to give you access to the cabin air filters. Now you can shut the uh, ignition key back off. Okay, now you just lift up the little mesh door and you can reach in. And if you've got big hands, it's a pain in the butt. But otherwise, you can pull the filters out. And normally, they come in a pack of two. Uh, the one that I took out previously was one big filter, but generally, every one I've gotten since then comes in a pack of two. And all you do is, it's a reverse procedure. After you pull it out, you slide the other one in place. Um, there's like a little tray in there. And once you slide the filter in, you push the first one to the back, and then you place the second filter in there. Now, when you get a filter, this one doesn't have it. Look for an arrow that might be on the end or on the side, which indicates the airflow, because you want to make sure that the airflow is coming down across the filter if it so specifies. Now, the arrow should be pointed down, and there's an easy way to remember this. Okay, there's an easy way to remember which way the air is flowing through your cabin air filter. Take a look at the switch that you turned on before, which turns on the air circulation in your vehicle. Now, if you take a look right here, you're going to see a little automobile, and there's going to be an arrow on it, which is going to show you which way the air is flowing and hopefully it'll still focus. You can see the way the arrow is pointed right there. Now there are different filters that you can get. I know this looks dirty but it isn't. This has activated charcoal which helps to remove uh, odors. 
and that's why it looks like it's already filthy, but it isn't. Now you probably can't see it, but I already have one of my filters installed. Like I said, it slides into a little tray and then you just slide it to the front toward the edge of the compartment. The second filter goes in into the same tray and all I do is I just kind of press down on both just to make sure that they're seated in there. And you can see them in there. And then you just reverse the steps. You close up the little door here and um, then put your glove box back in. Now, replacing the glove box is easy, but sometimes it can be a pain in the butt. Um, you have a little tab on each bottom here. Now, each tab is going to slide in here, and then you have to lift the glove box up. I'm going to try to do this one-handed. You can see how, how the tab slides in there. Now, when you lift it up, I'll try to prop it up on my knee. You can see the little tab little pin right there hits on each side so you just push that in and, and push that in right here and see it locks into place so you can close it up and it opens as normal and again all you're doing is you're pushing this little little pin just in behind the, the plastic of the dash and that's it. A good, easy DIY project that's going to save you a lot of money.